Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin as always with the latest headlines. As more bodies are pulled out of the rubble, Nepal grapples with shortage of water and relief material. Many remote areas still inaccessible. 4,000 police personnel keep watch as Moga teenager is cremated under pressure from opposition Punjab government orders orbit bus service off the roads. UN assures India it will take up release of 2611 Mumbai attacks mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakhvi internationally. Countdown starts uh, to the general elections in uh, UK on the 7th of May. Opinion polls predict a hung outcome even as Conservatives and Labour Party says that it's time for change. Well, our top focus on the bulletin this morning. More bodies were pulled out from the rubble as Nepal's rising death toll in the massive quake has gone way past 7,000. Relief materials are still hard to come by as aid workers have struggled to reach remote parts. The Kathmandu airport has also been shut down for big jets due to damages from the quake. Amid all this, Nepal is struggling with a new crisis, lack of water. Heaps of international relief material like these are waiting for distribution. Sending aid to the victims of Nepal's worst earthquake in eight decades is caught in strict custom rules, as well as challenges to reach the remote parts of the country. With monsoons just weeks away, concerns are growing among relief organizations. We are working against the clock, and that clock is set by the monsoons. Our failure to reach those populations before the monsoons would l eliminate any ability to provide them with the shelter, food, and other needs. The United Nations has also called for more donations as distributing relief material is getting costlier. In Delhi, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and Nepal's ambassador to India, Deep Upadhyay, saw off another set of relief material to Kathmandu. Indian forces and NDRF teams are still working on ground to help Nepal recover from the disaster. The reason is that when the disaster happened, it was about one or one hour ago, the Delhi crisis management group was in Delhi. After that, the President of the meeting with the President of the लीफ के लिए जो पहला हमारा फौज का जहाज था एफओस का वो चार बजे तक यहाँ से चल चुका था। तो काइंड ऑफ प्रोएक्टिव रूल एंड मैनेजमेंट इस वंडरफुल इस आई थिंक इट इज एवरी ग्लोब शुड लर्न हाउ प्रॉपर्टी शुड शुड बी वी गट इट। मोर बॉडीज वर पुल्ड आउट ऑफ़ द रबल ऑन संडे। रेस्क्यू वर्कर्स आर नाउ बिजी Amid efforts to prevent epidemic in Nepal, the country is now facing water crisis. It was already a crisis here in Kathmandu to get water, but now it's because of the earthquake, it's very bad. Authorities have ordered the immediate cremation of unclaimed bodies, but residents say they are worried of a possible outbreaks of disease. Officials have said the death toll could rise further as rescue workers have not been able to reach some of the remote areas yet. With inputs from Amritan Shurai, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the UN has estimated over 6 lakh houses have been destroyed in Nepal and over 2 million people still remain displaced. As the country picks up the pieces from the massive quake, rebuilding the country and rehabilitating the victims is now a major challenge. Life was slowly limping back to normal in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Some shops began reopening eight days after a deadly earthquake. At the famous Darbar Square, the sounds of bulldozers greeted those who returned. But there is hardly any business. Business is very bad. Because the tourist business is very bad. And the tourists are all running. They don't have business. 
Elsewhere, people have started to put brick by brick and rebuild homes amid the ruins. Over 6 lakh houses have been destroyed in the country, leaving 2 million people displaced. It is now a major challenge to rebuild houses. It may take over a year to do that. 99% of houses uh, are destroyed by the earthquake. That's why uh, we will not get uh, workers on time, many workers. Uh, that's why we will, it will take more than a year. Houses apart, there are broken lives to take care of. Those who have survived, the trauma of the disaster is still dominant. Frequent aftershocks triggering the nightmares of the massive quake a week ago still causes panic among some of them. A group of psychologists have started counselling them in the hour of crisis. People, they are suffering from fear, you know, some kind of uh, anxiety, some kind of traumas that they have gone through while in the earthquake. So they, they fear to go back home. Meanwhile, the rescue teams have all but given up hopes to find more survivors. The international search and rescue operations are slowly wrapping up from Nepal. The last survivor they pulled out of the debris was a 15-year-old boy who remained buried under rubble for over 130 hours. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, bringing an end to the standoff in Moga district of Punjab, the teenage girl who was thrown out of a moving bus along with her mother after a molestation attempt by goons was cremated yesterday. Here's a detailed report. Under the watchful eyes of over 4,000 police personnel, the mortal remains of the teenage girl consigned to flames in Moga. But away from the cremation ground, the political storm continued in Punjab. Protesters belonging to the Aam Army Party, Congress and family members demanded a strong action against the culprits responsible for the death of the victim who was thrown out of a bus after being molested. The police investigation was a little doubtful that the people who arrested him CCTV visuals also showed the bus violating rules minutes before the girl and her mother were pushed out. The Punjab High Court took cognizance of the case, after which the state government ordered the buses run by Orbit Aviation to go off the roads. Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal met the family of the victim on Sunday, but Opposition leaders said it was too late, even as they alleged a breakdown of law and order. अभी तक सरकार की तरफ से खाली दबाव बनाने की दबाव बनाया जा रहा है कि आओ और राजीनामा करो, कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ कर लो, पैसे ले लो, नौकरी ले लो. The whole Punjab police was on the job of protecting the buses of the chief minister and deputy deputy chief minister. Now that it is what is happening now in Punjab is totally against the constitution. Both the mother and daughter were travelling in the bus belonging to the Orbit Bus Company owned by Punjab Deputy Chief Minister Sukhbir Singh Badal. Four accused have been arrested in the case and all of them are charged with murder and molestation. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Well, concerned over the release of 2611 Mumbai attacks, masterminds Akhil Rahman Lakhvi, the UN, has assured India to take up the matter internationally. India received a letter from the head of the UNSC committee in this regard. Earlier, India decided to move the UN, alleging violation of the provisions of the sanctions committee after Lakhvi was released on bond. A day after India sought United Nations intervention in the release of Mumbai terror attack mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, the UN has come forward assuring it will take up India's request at its next meeting. Chair of the UNSC Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee Ambassador Jim McClay acknowledged India's concerns on the matter and responded to India's letter. The committee website too supported India's view that Lakhvi's release violates the provisions of the body. It reads, in past years, Lakhvi has played an important role in LED fundraising activities, receiving donations from Al-Qaeda affiliates on behalf of LED. He has also managed a training camp in Afghanistan. India's decision to approach the UN on Lakhvi's release was welcomed across party lines. 
Leaders said provision of UN convention has to be invoked in order to put pressure on Pakistan for not dealing with terrorists such as Lakhvi. India has registered a, a strong protest uh, with the United Nations for the release of uh, 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 Lakhvi from the Pakistani courts and, uh, and, and UN intervention has been sought to uh, ensure that Lakhvi is, is, is maintained, is sent back to jail and justice is done to the 2611 uh, Mumbai uh, riot victims. There are solid evidences which have been provided to Pakistan and America has also confirmed that all evidence India has provided to uh, Pakistan are absolutely solid and he can be dealt with. But what is happening is Pakistan is not taking too much of action. Protocol ka requirement ke anusar sab kuch important hai. Lekin ye bilateral issue hai. Ye Prime Minister khud intervene kar kar is issue ko sort out karna padega. Ye issue UN mein uthana ho sakta hai uchit hai. Lekin saath saath bilateral dialogue jari rakna jaruri hai is vishay par. In its letter to UN's Ashok Mukherjee, India pointed out that Lakhvi is a listed terrorist according to which Lakhvi is subject to assets freeze, travel ban and an arms embargo. India claimed any bail money posted for Lakhvi is also a violation of the provisions of the sanctions committee. The matter has also raised concerns in the US, UK, Russia, France and Germany, with Washington calling for his re-arrest. The Secretary of State, in fact, also personally made the phone call to urge that um, efforts be made um, to... Uh, um, re-arrest and to um, um, ensure that uh, he does not um, roam free. Pakistan had set Lakhvi free on 9th of April this year. The court had ordered his release, ruling that his detention was illegal. Bureau report, Rajasthaba TV. Going on now, President Pranam Mukherjee conferred the 62nd National Film Awards on Sunday at the Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi. The coveted, uh, coveted Dada Sahib Falke Award uh, this year was given to veteran actor Shashi Kapoor. Let's take a look now. The 62nd National Film Awards were given out on Sunday. President Pranam Mukherjee conferred the awards at a ceremony held in Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi. INB Minister Arun Chetli and Minister of State Rajivardhan Rathore were also present. The coveted Dada Sahab Palke Award this year was given to veteran actor Shashi Kapoor. He was unable to attend the ceremony due to illness. He is the third of the Kapoor family to win the prestigious award. The 77-year-old actor has won three national awards as an actor as well as producer in his career. Our movies not only showcase the multicultural diversity of our country, but is also a tribute to our linguistic richness. Indian cinema has come a long way since its birth over a century ago. It has forayed into new avenues and innovated both in form as well as content. Chaitanya Tamhane's multilingual film Court has been adjudged the best picture. It had won two awards at the 71st Venice International Film Festival. One of them was the prestigious Lion of the Future Award for the best first feature. The award for the best director went to Srijit Mukherjee for his Bengali film Chatur Skon. He also won the award for best original screenplay. The Best Actor Award went to Vijay for his performance in Kannar film Nanu Avanalu Avalu. And the award for Best Actress went to Kangana Ranaut for her role in Queen. Director Vishal Bharadwaj's film Heather had the largest share of awards this year. The critically acclaimed film won as many as six national awards. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Moving on now, Boxing India President Sandeep Jajodia was removed by the Federation on Sunday. Jajodia was voted out in the no-confidence motion against him, which was brought in at a special general meeting in Delhi. Jajodia lost the motion 2 is to 55 after 57 of the 64 general body members voted. Jajodia himself was absent from voting, but he termed his removal illegal. Earlier, Boxing India Secretary uh, Jake Kohli resigned after a fallout with Jajodhya for forging his signatures in a letter to the Asian Boxing Federation. Current Vice President Miren Paul is expected to be the consensus candidate for being the interim head. 
I think any result of this uh, meeting should have no bearing of uh, or has, should have any, any legal sanctity. I think all participants currently are defaulting uh, members and uh, they should first get the affiliation with BI before they call for a meeting again and, if they, and then they can cast a vote for sure. To preserve the transparency, democracy and fair practice in the um, governance of this sports activities in India, we have successfully carried out a new candidate's motion to remove the President's Secretary who has been dealing the, and administering the, the Boxing India on their own. Well, it's time for another quick break on the program right now, but uh, much more lined up on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, with just four days remaining to the run-up to the election, uh, campaigns and debates are heating up in Britain. Opinion polls suggest a hung parliament as conservatives and the opposition Labour Party run neck and neck with neither on track to win control of the House of Commons on their own. The campaigns and the debates are heating up in Britain. The Conservatives and the Labour Party are wooing voters, both saying it's time for change. Thank you very much. Prime Minister David Cameron is fighting for a second term. After five years of austerity and tensions within the coalition government, the Conservatives are focusing on tax reforms, while the Labour Party on national health schemes. You've got to remember, step back a second, what we inherited. I became Prime Minister at a time when there was no money left. And I, I bring this with me everywhere, the note that the Treasury Minister left. And it's, it, there it is. Dear Chief Secretary, I'm afraid there is no money. That is the situation I inherited. So we have had to make difficult decisions. Opinion polls are predicting a hung parliament with both Labour and Conservative parties likely to win less than 300 seats each short of majority in the 650-seat parliament. Financial crisis, there was a high deficit, that deficit hasn't been cleared. It will be the mission of my government to cut the deficit every year and balance the books. Deputy Prime Minister and Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg conceded a coalition was likely. The real question is, who's going to go in there alongside them? Is it going to be Alex Salmond? Uh, is it going to be Nigel Farage or is it going to me, be me and the Liberal Democrats? And my great fear, as I was saying earlier, is if you have David Cameron dancing to the tune of Nigel Farage or the swivel-eyed brigade on the right wing of the Conservative Party or you have, uh, or you have Ed Miliband basically the beck and call of Alex Salmond, you lurch off to the right and the left, right. which is not what we need as a country. All right, you, you sir. If re-elected, Cameron has promised to hold an in-out EU membership referendum in 2017, which the Labour Party has opposed. The Labour also appears to rule out a second Scottish referendum on its independence. Uncertainty looms large as Britain gears up for elections. Analysts predict weeks of political paralysis for Britain in the coming weeks as the country braces for a hung parliament. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, after a week's unrest, normalcy returned to the U.S. city of Baltimore on Sunday. Curfew was lifted after peaceful demonstrations a day before. Tensions eased after six police officers were charged for the death of an African-American, Freddie Gray, in custody. Violent protests erupted in the city soon after the incident. Many U.S. cities joined in the protests against the death of the 25-year-old man. I think a lot of the unrest has been settled, settled down in the sense of the protest, but that doesn't mean the work doesn't continue. We are actively engaging with the Department of Justice on collaborative review. We have been since last year in the process of improving our police department, reforming our police department, and putting in place things that will you know, eliminate this type of incident um, you know, from ever happening again. Well, pledging support for minority Tamils following decades of ethnic war, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry wrapped up his two-day visit to Sri Lanka on Sunday. Kerry met with Lanka's top Tamil leaders a day after holding talks with new President Maitripala Sirisena. Kerry's talks were aimed at promoting reconciliation between the government and minorities. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry ended his visit to Sri Lanka on Sunday, pledging support for minority Tamils following decades of ethnic war. 
Kerry also praised President Maitri Pala Sirisena's new government for reaching out to the Tamil minority after the end of the three-decade conflict that claimed more than one lakh lives. Kerry said it was important that the new government cooperate with the UN and mount an investigation into the cases of thousands who went missing. Sri Lanka is at a pivotal point. Peace has come, but true reconciliation will take time. Institutions of governance are gaining strength, but further progress needs to be made. Since coming to power in January polls, Sirisena has promised to investigate allegations of killings of hundreds of thousands of Tamils under former President Mahinda Rajapakse. Rajapaksa's government had clashed with the United Nations over its investigation into war atrocities. At Sirisena's request, the UN has agreed to delay its report until September. Meanwhile, Kerry announced the start of an annual bilateral dialogue between the U.S. and Sri Lanka. U.S. would also send experts to advise the new government on economic growth, trade and investment. Kerry's visit to Sri Lanka comes after years of tension between Washington and former President Rajapaksa over allegations of human rights abuses and war crimes at the end of a long conflict with Tamil separatists, which ended in 2009. Rajapaksa was unseated by Sirisena in an election win in January. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on now, an Indian woman succumbed to her injuries last night in the U.S. after being shot during a robbery attempt. The victim, identified as Mridula Ben Patel, was shot at a store she co-owned in South Carolina on Thursday. According to police, the incident appears to be an attempted robbery. Authorities are reviewing the surveillance footage that shows the suspect walking into the store and then shooting the victim. Officials of the Indian consulate in Atlanta have spoken to the family of the victim, which has not sought any assistance from the mission so far. <laughs> उसके बाद कोई दूसरा कस्टमर आया जो सालोट जा रहा था नॉर्थ साउथ नॉर्थ कैरोलिना में उसने अंदर एंटर होने के बाद उनको देखा तो वो बिल्कुल स्टोर में पड़ी हुई थी नीचे उसके बाद उन्होंने पुलिस को फोन किया और उसको हॉस्पिटलाइज हुआ वहां पे जो सिचुएशन है अभी चाचा अकेले है बच्चे उनके साथ में भी नहीं है हम लोग इंडिया में हैं और वहां की गवर्नमेंट क्या कर रही है वेल फॉर ऑल द अदर इंटरनेशनल न्यूज़ एंड अपडेट्स हियर्स आवर वर्ल्ड रैप Costa Rica issued a red alert after a boat carrying 180 tons of ammonium nitrate spilled into the Gulf of Nicoya. Strong waves tipped the vessel that was transporting the cargo to Costa Rica's central fertilizer company. The National Emergency Commission has urged people to avoid swimming and suspend fishing on the beaches. Pakistan asked India to trade through Karachi port after refusing to sign a motor vehicle agreement and to open up road links for India and Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani reportedly told Pakistani leadership to open up the road to India to avoid denying Pakistan access to Central Asia. An anti-racism protest turned into the most violent demonstration in Tel Aviv, the capital of Israel. The protesters were Israeli Jews of Ethiopian origin who are angry over a video clip showing policemen shoving the punching and punching a black soldier. At least 20 police officers and protesters were injured. Police used water cannons and stun grenades to disperse the crowd. Nearly 5,800 migrants were rescued and 10 bodies recovered off the Libyan coast over the weekend. The migrants were travelling in wooden and rubber boats in 17 separate trips. At least 1,750 people died this year trying to cross the Mediterranean to avoid political persecution. That's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a nice day.